This is one of my favorite tapes. It is a tape of what you might call enrichment topics. Uh, some topics that may have been left out of the course that you'd like to see, or some things that usually aren't shown to people in college algebra, but which I think you might find interesting. I call them the XY files. The proof is in here. And I hope you enjoy them. Now, on this X-Files tape, what I've done, as you see at the top of your screen, is I've written four unit zero. And for other slides, I will write four other units. So you'll have an idea where the segments within those slides actually apply to the course. So the first thing we'll look at here under unit zero is a proof that square root of two is irrational. You may never have actually seen a proof of that, so I thought I would include one here. So let's see how this would go. The, there is a theorem, square root of two is irrational. Here's how the proof is going to go. We're going to say, we're going to do this proof by way of contradiction. Now this is usually the way one proves that something is irrational. Because rational is a proper definition, but irrational is simply, simply all the real numbers that are not rational. So how would you go about approaching that? The traditional way is to do it by contradiction. We will assume that square root of 2 is rational, and then we'll try and get a contradiction from that. So by way of contradiction, let us assume that square root of 2 is rational. Well, what does that mean? So that means that the square root of 2 is equal to p over q, where p and q are natural numbers. After all, we know that square root of 2 is positive. We don't have to worry about negatives. And, of course, it goes without saying, although I'll mention it in case anyone wonders, that q is not 0. Of course, 0 is not a natural number. And we will assume, so we've assumed this, that p over q equals square root of 2, and that p over q is in lowest terms. Lowest terms. Which means p and q have no factors in common. Okay, this is going to be very important to our proof. Have no factors in common whatsoever. Okay, so that will be very important for our proof. And having set this up this way, now we will sort of follow our nose and see what happens. Then, let's just write down what we've got. We've got square root of 2 equals p over q. Well, uh, what I can, one thing I can do is multiply both sides by q to bring the q up. So I have square root of 2 times q is equal to p. Now I don't like the square root symbol, so I can square to get rid of that. So if I square both sides, I have square root of 2 times q squared is equal to p squared. On the left, I get 2q squared is equal to p squared. Ah, now here's our first observation. Notice that 2 divides the left-hand side. So 2 divides left-hand side. That's my abbreviation for left-hand side, LHS. So since it divides the left-hand side, it must, since the right-hand side is equal to it, must divide the right-hand side. So 2 must divide the right-hand side. But the right-hand side here is p squared, which if I were to expand it is p times p. So where would the 2 divide? It must therefore divide into p. Which means, meaning, p is even. So it has a factor of 2. OK, we've observed this from our little argument. Let us continue. If p is even, we can write it as 2 times something. And then we can continue from here and see where that leads. So we can write p equals 2 times r. Because it's even, it can be written as a 2 times a, another uh, natural number. And then we can continue. We had previously 2q squared equals p squared. Well, now p is 2r. So let's just go ahead and substitute that in. Well, we can square that right-hand side. So repeating this, 2q squared will be 4r squared. And then, of course, we can divide 2 out of both sides for convenience. 
So Q squared is now 2R squared. Ah, now we're back to the same argument we did before. Since 2 divides the right-hand side, it must therefore divide the left-hand side, which means that Q must be even. So by the same argument, by the same argument as before, Q is even. So we have concluded the following, putting it all together in one place. Thus, P and Q are both even numbers. So they share, among other things, they may share something else, but they certainly share a factor of 2. But wait, that's a contradiction. Why is that a contradiction? Well, we assumed originally that P and Q had no factors in common. And now we have proven, under the assumption that square root of 2 is rational, we have proven that P and Q have a factor in common, the factor 2. Okay, So this is a contradiction because, just to get it on paper here, we assumed P and Q had no factors in common. Well, this all derived from the fact that we assumed that square root of 2 was rational. So square root of 2 must be irrational. It cannot be rational because if it's rational, it leads to that contradiction. And that's it. That's the proof that square root of 2 is irrational. That's all there is to it.